Last time, Eaglet visited Brownie at the animal shelter. This time, Eaglet wants to deliver food to Brownie. To reach the animal shelter, Chariot moved straight for a certain number of inches and then turned right or left and then moved straight again, etc., etc., until it reached the animal shelter. That worked, but wasn't very precise because the distances could be off some, depending on whether the wheels slipped a little along the way. This time, let's use the red stripes on the red side of the road to keep track of Chariot's progress. In fact, I've added more red stripes along the first section of the straight road to allow us to count them there also. To count stripes, we'll create a new my block and we'll use a variable to keep track of the number of red stripes that the robot has seen. To deliver food, we need a mechanism on the front of the robot to hold the food. I've built a tray and attached it so the gear on the front motor can cause the tray to tip forward when it's time to deliver the food. Unfortunately, the weight of the tray makes the robot itself tip forward. Let's add some weight on the back of the robot to keep that from happening. Now we need to change the program. Let's start by creating the new my block. Let's call it count stripes. We want to tell it how many stripes to count, so let's add an input. Let's name the input target count. That will work fine, but if we use it in the main program to count stripes, the count will read something like count stripe 7. To make the block easier to read, let's move the word stripes to the right of the target count by deleting stripes from the name of the my block, creating a label, and then changing the label to stripes. Now when we use the new my block, the word stripes will appear after the number of stripes. Let's save it and move it over to the right. Even though we haven't added any blocks to the new my block yet, let's put it in our main program in place of the block that moves straight for 17 inches. There are seven stripes between the house and the first turn in the road. Let's have it count those seven stripes. Now we need to finish creating the new my block by adding blocks to it. First, let's create a variable called stripe count. Now let's set stripe count to zero at the beginning of the new my block. Now let's start the robot moving forward. We want to look for a certain number of stripes, so let's add a repeat until block. We want to repeat until stripe count gets to the target count so we need a compare equal block. Let's fill in the left side with the stripe count variable. To fill in the right side of the compare, we drag the input name down to the compare block. Now we need to give the robot time to move forward until it's over a white area between the red stripes, so we add a wait until block. Remember that a wait block tells the program to wait, but allows the robot to keep moving in whatever direction it was already moving. Then we fill in the block with a color sensor block that returns either true or false according to the color. We change the sensor it uses from A to B because the sensor on the right side is plugged into port B. We change the color to white. Next, we need the robot to keep moving forward until it's over a red stripe, so we add another wait until block. We fill this one in with another sensor block. Again, we change the port to B, but we leave the color as red because that's what we want the robot to find. When the wait completes, we know the robot is over a red stripe, so we add 1 to the stripe count. The program will loop back to the top of the repeat 
where it will compare the stripe count to the target count. It will keep looping until it reaches target count. At that point, we want the robot to stop moving, so let's add a stop moving block after the repeat block. Let's add some more blocks so the robot keeps us informed about what it's doing. We can have it turn the color of the center button to white after it's found a white area. Similarly, we can have it turn the button red when it finds a red stripe. We can also have it display the count each time it changes it. For completeness, let's put another one of those blocks at the top so the display starts out at zero. Okay, let's read the program to confirm that it does what we need it to do. Set the stripe count to zero. Write the stripe count on the hub display. Start the robot moving forward. Repeat until the stripe count equals the target count. Wait until the color sensor connected to port B is over a white area. Set the center button to white. Wait until the color sensor sees the color red. Set the center button light to red. Change the stripe count by 1. Write the stripe count on the hub display. When the stripe count reaches the target count, the repeat stops repeating and the stop moving block stops the robot. Before we demonstrate the program, let's slow chariot speed down to 25% so we can watch what it's doing more easily. Let's also disconnect the blocks after the count stripes block so we can see where the robot ends up after it plays that block. With those changes, we're ready to download the program to location 10 on the robot's hub. Let's let Eaglet rest off to the side rather than ride chariot so we can see what's displayed on the top of the hub. Chariot moves back, it turns right, is counting the stripes and blinking the light as it does. It's stopped after seven stripes. Good job. Now we know the new My Block works, so we can use it again for the second section of the road. Let's return the robot to 50% speed and reconnect the other blocks. After Eaglet gets to the seventh red stripe, it needs to go six inches further before it turns left. Let's add a block that does that. Now let's replace the move 21 inches with count nine stripes. Again, we add a move block to have the robot go another 5 inches before starting the next left turn. After the left turn, it needs to go another 5 inches before it turns right. As a final step, we need to unload the food by lowering the tray. To do that, we add a block that will turn the motor connected to port E counterclockwise for 45 degrees. Okay, let's download the program to the robot and try it out. Before we start the program, we need to put some food in the tray. Hmm, the robot started out counting stripes, but it missed one and kept moving past the turn. Let's try again. Good. Counted all seven stripes and turned left. It counted nine stripes and turned left again. 
Oops, it ended up bumping the animal shelter, but it delivered the food. Creating a my block to count the red stripes allowed us to program the chariot robot so it could keep track of how far it had traveled along the road. One time it missed a stripe and we had to start over. That's probably because it didn't stay in the middle of the road or because its turns weren't as precise as they could be. Next time we'll try adding line following using the color sensor on the left side of the robot and more precise turns using the gyro sensor built into the hub. Thank you.